Hey everyone, welcome back to the Golf House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny, and today I am going to show you how I make a quick beef tips and creamy polenta. I'm going to show you my quick and easy recipe for beef tips in the Instant Pot. So quick and easy. If you don't have an Instant Pot, you can so do this right on your stovetop or you can do it right in your oven. You could even do it in your crock pot. I've done it each way and it comes out great no matter how you do it. But today, I am a little short on time. My meat is still a little frozen. It's cleaning day around here. so. We're gonna make a big pot of creamy polenta to go with it. So put the polenta down. I usually pour it over a greased cookie sheet, cut it in squares, put the squares down, and then pour the beef tips over the top. So good. Let me show you how I make it. Oops, sorry, I thought I had my camera on. <laughs> I've got this in saute mode and I've got half of a large onion in here. This is kind of like, kind of like a beef bourguignon or or you can call it beef tips, whatever. It does have wine in it. I am not using burgundy wine. And I'm leaving out the bacon today. I don't have any defrosted. If you have bacon that you want to pop in, you can totally do that. This is just my quick version. <laughs> I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Also, I will not be coating my stew meat in flour and searing it off. I'm going to skip that step too. I'm cleaning. i got things going on. I'm going to put in a couple of cloves of garlic. Okay, here's my second clove here. This is all going to be quick. Into this, I'm going to throw in. I'm going to throw in a little bit of thyme, and I'm probably going to do mm, half a teaspoon of thyme. Half a teaspoon of pepper. Teaspoon of heavenly pink salt. Okay. I'm going to put in about a cup of Cabernet Sauvignon. You can use whatever kind of red wine you like to drink, preferably a dry one. So Cabernet Sauvignon is a drier red wine. If you want a good affordable one, Robert Mondavi makes a great one. It's the one I usually buy. I'm going to put that in. I'm going to put my mushrooms in. I've got a, about a half a pound of quartered mushrooms there. I have a pound and a half of stew meat. And I had to defrost it in the microwave because I'm terrible about taking everything out. But look over there. Uh-huh. I did take some meat out. Defrosting, working on freezer meals. Which this one may air after the freezer meals. I don't know. Haven't decided yet. Okay, I've got one large carrot that I've diced. And I kind of did it in small dice. I don't want it in big rounds. And that's basically just to kind of <clears throat> get out some of the... Um, bite that the tomato and the wine are going to give. I have a couple tablespoons of tomato paste that I'm putting in here. Get this, ooh, splashed it on myself. Okay, I'm going to add in water and bouillon because I am out of beef broth. I really need to make some. That's about two cups. Three cups. I'm going to leave it at three cups. Putting this on. I make sure my vent is turned. I'm going to cancel my saute mode and we're going to do stew meat. Take off that, that keep warm because I'm going to open this right up afterward and we're going to add in a bag of pearl onions. So I'm just going to kind of leave that sitting along the side until I'm ready for it. Okay, this is done off my 35 minutes here. 
I'm going to test my meat, see how done it is. Okay, that is pretty, pretty falling apart, but you know what? I think it could go for a little bit longer. These chunks were a little bit bigger. I'm going to pour in my frozen onions. And then I'm going to restart this and cook it for a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna cook this. I'm gonna cook less time than that. Let's do 15 minutes. Take that keep warm off. I'm gonna cook this for another 15 minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna start our polenta. Okay, today I'm using Polenta Classica by Agrinature, and I believe this is imported from Italy. Since I did get it at the Italian grocery, I have a three cups of, I'm sorry, I have four cups of chicken broth in there. Usually when you make polenta, they say to add three cups, bring it to a boil, stir in your polenta slowly, add another cup. I don't, I just dump it all in. As you know, I get impatient. I am going to measure out my one cup. I'm not gonna pour it in yet until this comes to a bowl. Okay, so some of it might have gone in. To cover on this until it comes to a boil. As soon as it comes to a boil, I'm gonna pour in my polenta. My water is boiling. I'm gonna slowly add in my polenta. I'm gonna turn my heat down to a medium low. And I'm gonna stand here and cook and stir. Believe me, you wanna make sure you're stirring. Oh, and another thing about polenta. I learned this the hard way when I was young. <laughs> Wear a glove. <laughs> This stuff will splatter on your hand and it sticks and it burns. When I was like 30, I burnt myself very badly doing this. So I'm gonna cook this for about 20 minutes-ish. When it's thick and creamy, I will be back. Okay, I put the lid on it for a few. I'm gonna go ahead and put heavy cream in here. I'm gonna start out with uh, about a half a cup of heavy cream because I want this to be creamy polenta. And FYI, you don't have to make polenta for this dish. You can totally just make noodles or rice. I'm going to put a smidge more, maybe another quarter cup, so about three quarters cup. I just kind of eyeball it. I'm terrible about measuring. <laughs> but I'd say more of a three quarter cup. And then I'm adding a half a cup of grated Parmesan. So I've got Parmesan and chicken broth. So I do not need to salt this. If you are using just water and you're not gonna put cheese in here, you may wanna salt it. Oh ma'am, that's delicious. Let me put some pepper in here. I'm gonna turn my heat off. I added a little bit more Parmesan to make it a cup. Again, if you don't like Parmesan, you don't have to do this. I have a greased cookie sheet. This is like a quarter, maybe? Quarter sheet? Something like that. I am going to Oh, so carefully pick this up and dump it in. Because you know, I'm not quite as strong as I used to be. <laughs> this will set up into squares and then you can cut it and put it right onto your plate. 
or you can dump it in your bowl just like this and then put your stuff right on top. You don't even have to do this step. This is just how we like it. And then after I get it evened out, I like to just sprinkle it with some grated or shredded Parmesan. Our pot is done. I'm just gonna vent this out. When this is all vented out, I'll be back. Okay, <clears throat> this is done and I have a little slurry here. It's just a cornstarch slurry and I'm gonna thicken it with cornstarch slurry. You can go ahead and thicken it with your choice of thickener. That's just a couple tablespoons of cornstarch and a couple tablespoons of water. And I'm gonna, I've got it on saute mode. I'm gonna bring it up, um, cook it so that I can see if it's um, got enough cornstarch in it. If not, I'll do one more tablespoon and one more tablespoon of water. Okay, so I've got my polenta square in there and I am just gonna serve some of my beef on top. If you don't like this much gravy with it, um, you can cut the water back to two cups or the broth back to two cups rather than the three cups that I put in. Delicious. Okay, that is all there is to it. Pretty easy, huh? So delicious. Something that used to take hours can be done really quick. Um, I did use the longer cooking polenta, but you can totally buy the quick cooking polenta. I just didn't really have any. <laughs> Otherwise, I would. And generally, when I make polenta, I usually use, I think it's called Golden Peasant brand. I believe it's called Golden Peasant. Um, that's the brand I prefer and I couldn't find it at my Safeway. I have no idea. I'm gonna have to ask them to order some more. I love it. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out and I sure do appreciate your support. You can find me on Instagram at JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes, including this one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.